This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazov moment. Tonight, Huma Abedin's longing for Syrian refugees. Uh, just recently, a lot of you that are following it uh, would know about this. James O'Keefe has just released an undercover video of top Clinton aide Huma Abedin at a Hillary Clinton fundraiser for women. And uh, if you watch this video, you know, they said that videos aren't allowed, but O'Keefe had one of his undercover reporters videotape it, and she's just making this speech, and then later she's talking uh, to several people, and she's just in ecstasy about bringing in Syrian refugees into America. And anybody that's against it, the, uh, you know, some of the leaders of the GOP and the candidates running for president of the GOP, they're just evil and Islamophobes and et cetera, et cetera. I was wondering about a couple of things that I wanted to talk about in this uh, JG moment. Uh, you have, it's already proven that there are terrorists that have been found among people posing as Syrian refugees or people that are from Syria. Um, ISIS is bragging and boasting that it's sneaking in uh, its own terrorists under the camouflage of refugees, et cetera, et cetera. People who love America are wary about bringing in, quote unquote, Syrian refugees. If you love America, why would you be in ecstasy? Why would you be so much in favor of bringing in Syrian refugees when so many of them uh, are coming in and they have been infiltrated uh, by ISIS and other jihadists? Here's a few thoughts on this. When Huma Abedin was even on that stage as a top Clinton aide, I was thinking, why is she even up there? And where are the media's questions? Where is the reporting on these following facts? Huma's Muslim Brotherhood connections have already been well established. She's got three family members, her late father, her mother, and her brother, all connected to Muslim Brotherhood operatives and or organizations. Where's the reporting on this? Why hasn't she been asked anything about um, her family members? Uh, and these connections and relations of hers. And to, even to be asked if she agrees with their views, to be asked if she renounces their views and connections. Huma Abedin herself was a longtime former employee of the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs, which shares the Muslim Brotherhood's goal of establishing Islamic supremacy and Sharia law worldwide. Now, what, now, in terms of the Institute of Muslim, Mi Muslim Minority Affairs, one of the goals of this organization is connected to stealth jihad in the West and flooding the West, including the United States, with Muslims to tilt the democratic balance, to, to tilt towards Sharia. This is hijra. It's jihad by immigration. So, you know, the, the, the wheels in our head should be spinning here, should be connecting the dots. You've got an individual, Huma Abedin, who's a former employee of this organization, Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs, uh, and one of its goals is Hijra, and now she herself is pushing for Syrian refugees to come to the United States. Why aren't we concerned about this? And when I say we, I'm referring to the administration, to our media, where are the questions? Where is the scrutiny? Another fact, the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs and Huma Abedin is a former employee of this organization. It was founded by Abdullah Omar Nasif, an Islamic extremist with ties to Al-Qaeda and the Muslim World League. Now, are you by any chance only learning this this evening? Because I'm talking about it on the Jamie Glazoff moment. Where is ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post? Why aren't they discussing these things? One place that discusses all of these things, go to David Horowitz Freedom Center's website, discoverthenetworks.org. And that website describes the networks and agendas of the political left, and also how the unholy alliance works, how the radical left is in league with jihad and stealth jihad. Let me read a part of the profile of Huma Abedin from discoverthenetworks.org. Again, go to discoverthenetworks.org, one of the most important websites to go to. Here's a clip on Huma Abedin on, in her profile from discoverthenetworks.org. 
Quote, from 1996 to 2008, Abedin was employed by the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs, IMMA, as the assistant editor of its in-house publication, The Journal of Muslim Minority Affairs, JMMA. At least the first seven of those years overlapped with the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Abdullah Omar Nassif's active presence at IMMA. So it's overlapping that this individual is working at the same place that Huma Abedin is working at. Abedin's last six years at the Institute, 2002 to 2008, was spent as a JMMA editorial board member. For one of those years, 2003, Nassif and Abedin served together on that board. Again, Nassif founded the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs, and he's got extremist, uh, he, he's an Islamic extremist with ties to Al-Qaeda and the, and the Muslim World League. Where is the reporting on this? Huma Abedin has never been asked what she thinks about her mother, Saliha Abedin, who directs a Muslim Brotherhood group that advocates the implementation of strict Sharia law and opposes Egyptian statutes that currently ban marital rape, female genital mutilation, and child marriage. You would think it would be a normal question. She's got a mother connected to the Muslim Brotherhood that's working towards Sharia law, and she's not asked, what do you think of your mother's associations uh, with the Muslim Brotherhood? What do you think about your mother's views? She's not asked these questions. And even when I say this, I can feel that people are sitting back. A lot of people are sitting back like, oh, Jamie, this is very inappropriate. Oh, you're being a little bit racist. You know, racism is always coming up in this too, as if Islam is somehow a race, as if Sharia somehow represents a race, when it represents an oppressive ideology. And Sharia law is oppressive, and especially towards women. And so you would think that we would be asking these questions. To conclude, why was Huma Abedin the deputy chief of staff for Hillary Clinton while Hillary was secretary of state? Why did she have access to classified information? Was there security clearance? Where was the media asking questions about why this was the right-hand woman to Hillary Clinton while she was at the State Department? Let me ask this. If somebody was related to or connected to a Ku Klux Klan person or to the Ku Klux Klan, if somebody was connected to, to Nazi members or to the Nazi party, wouldn't we be asking some questions if that person was involved in American leadership, was you know, helping uh, a candidate run for president? Wouldn't we be asking some questions about people who are connected to the KKK or to the Nazi party? Yes, we would be asking questions, and we should be asking questions. Why is it okay when somebody's connected to the Muslim Brotherhood, connected to people connected to the Muslim Brotherhood, and to people who support Sharia and Hijra and the downfall of the United States? Why aren't these questions being asked? Everybody, go to discoverthenetworks.org. It's the David Horowitz Freedom Center's website that describes the networks and agendas of the political left. And look up Huma Abedin and read the profile on her, all filled with facts, all documented. And ask yourself, where's the media? Why aren't they asking questions? I'll see you on the next edition of the Jamie Glassoff Moment. Good night. <laughs>